Scripture this morning is taken from Psalms 118, verses 1 through 2, and verses 19 through 29. Sometimes um, when um, you see the scriptures, you, you wonder uh, how it relates to, to uh, the theme and also um, a little bit of uh, the meaning behind the behind the words. So I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to continue to uh, break, break the uh, scripture down for your uh, understanding, hopefully for your understanding. From Psalms uh, 118 verses 1 and 2, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say his love endures forever. And from 19 through 29, Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thee thanks unto the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteousness may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone of the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done this every day this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with ropes and take it up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His, good, his love endures forever. As I said before, it has been said by others, and sometimes I agree, how does this scripture lesson relate to the subject? Today, I hope to break down the scripture into parts that, that we can understand. As we listen to the words of the psalmist in the first two verses, we must remember that God directed Moses to help flee the Israelites from bondage in Egypt to cross the Red Sea. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Without God's help, the Israelites might have, not, have still be enslaved in Egypt. It's interesting to see that the Red Sea is back in the news. It also deals with getting freed. I'm sure there are several thousand people, whether directly or indirectly, are waiting for that ship to be freed. God is still protecting the Israelite people. He has forever, and his love endures forever. When we skip forward to the next verses from Psalms 19 through 21, from 19 through 21, we find these words, open for me the gates of the righteous, I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. In those days, the gates would be the gates of the temple where everything holy transpired. The temple was the holy of holiest places. To obtain, to obtain a blessing of the priest and receive blessings from God, one would need to pass through the gates of the temple to worship. The temple was the holy place. That's where God was. They didn't realize that God was in your heart or your mind. God was in the temple. Thankfully, we have a much better understanding of God's love for us and how the Holy Spirit works. We can tap into the Holy Spirit from anywhere. We don't even need Wi-Fi. The hot spot is within us. We recognize that Jesus Christ is where our salvation comes. We can pray anytime and from any place to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Communication with God is the instant we want it. But remember, communication is not one way. Communication can be when God speaks to us. Pray without ceasing. Sometimes we may not recognize God because we are too busy. Hopefully, God doesn't need to shout for us to hear. 
In verses 22 through 24, we find these words. The stone builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Jesus gave a parable in, of the vineyard and the rebellious tenants, which we find in Matthew 21 through 33 through 40. The story of a rich landowner that planted a vineyard and built a wine press and leased the vineyard to some tenants. Then the landlord went to another country. After a time, he sent some servants back to check on the tenants to see if they were collecting any fruit and producing any wine. The tenants beat one of the servants and killed the other. Then the landlord sent more servants to check on things. Those servants were also beaten or killed. So the landowner sent his son. The tenants thought if they killed the son, they would get his inheritance. Jesus asked those that were listening to the parable, what would the landowner do? Those in attendance said that the landowner would destroy the wicked tenants and lease it out to tenants that would care for the vineyard and produce fruit for wine. In those verses, Christ is the cornerstone that is rejected by the religious leaders, such as the chief priests, the elders, scribes, and the Pharisees. Jesus pronounced judgment on those that had failed to recognize him as the true Messiah. In verse 24, the Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. I'm sure that you have heard this verse several times. It is often quoted, the Lord has given us this day and we should rejoice and be glad in it. We should rejoice in the goodness of what God has given us and be thankful for what we have. Every day may not be what we think of as a happy and joyful day. But as the saying goes, it could be worse. We need to focus on the good in each moment and make the best of what we have been given. We need to play the hand we have been dealt. In some ways, I guess every day could be a bit of a gamble. We pretty much know from day to day what we might expect. But what happens when something unexpected occurs? How do we handle the unexpected events that come our way? As a contractor, this can sometimes happen pretty easily. How can I handle the unexpected? Maybe I can make some time something to save the day. Sometimes you can be a hero and sometimes maybe not so much. Experience is a great teacher. Sometimes you learn from others and sometimes you learn from your mistakes. Learning from your mistakes is usually the hard lesson but that's the lesson that stays with you the longest. From verses 25 through 27, Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Blessing you means blessing everyone. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with ropes and take it up to the horns of the altar. Here we are begging for God to save us from our plight. Grant us prosperity, if not prosperity, and then at least grant us success in our lives. What is the ultimate success? I would say that it is probably salvation. We want the most that God might bless us with. We want to have God cradle us in his loving arms and carry us through life and into eternal life. We want to live a blessed life. If we do some soul searching and think back on our lives, I think we can probably say that in many ways he has done just that. Where would we be without his love? Where would we be if we had not found Jesus Christ in our lives? There is a lot of credit to go around several places, but I really think if we look back, God has been there every step of the way. Like the scene of the footsteps in the sand along the beach of our lives, sometimes there are two sets of steps and sometimes just one. When there is one step, set of steps, it is 
those times when God has carried us through. Through life's journey, he has also connected us with each other. We are bound together through our faith in Jesus and through our faith, we gain strength from each other. And from verse 28 through 29, you are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. We recognize the love of our heavenly father. We recognize that all we have comes from God. We also recognize that without God, we would be but dust. Because God breathed life into us, we are a living human being. We need to give thanks to God for our lives and the blessings we have. Remember his love does endure forever. We were placed on this earth for a reason. We, not, we may not know just exactly what that reason was, but by now some of us have a pretty good idea. We were put on this earth at this time for a reason. Let's make the best of that reason. The challenge today is to discover that reason and be the person that God placed us here to be. If you aren't sure why you're here in this time, ask God why. Are you up to that challenge? Follow his commandments and living our lives the best we know how. I know you can do it and God knows you can. Some of us started our faith journey as Latter-day Saints. What does that mean? What does latter days mean? Do you believe that this is that this is the time when Christ will return to earth? Will we rec will we welcome Christ to the earth and into our presence as they, as they did in the video we watched as Christ entered the city on a donkey? Will we recognize him as the savior? Some may believe that Christ may return when the conditions on this earth need to be fixed, that things are so bad that God must send Christ back to earth to save the earth from itself. When things get bad enough that God says enough is enough, God will send back Christ back to earth. Are we getting close to that state of affairs? I'm not saying that it's bad, but you judge for yourself. If so, does it need to be Christ? Is there someone else? God has chosen people throughout history to do the heavy lifting, do, to do wondrous things to help mankind. Who's to say that God won't do that same thing again? Are you in touch with God's plan for the earth? Why are we here? What is our purpose? If we aren't helping with God's plan, why not? God may have someone else in mind, but if so, we need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit so we are in support of God's plan. We need to be on the right side of history. Or does latter day say, latter days mean that when we have reached a higher spiritual level, that Christ will return to live with us? Us in that higher spiritual existence. If so, some things will need to take place and soon for us to reach that higher spiritual level. But then who am I to judge the conditions of the world? Either way, are you ready to meet Christ? Do you consider yourself worthy in his presence? Personally, I know I'll probably need to clean up my act. I want to leave you with a question. Are we humans living a human experience and working to live a spiritual experience? Or are we, or are we spiritual beings living a human experience? May God continue to bless us as we work together to build his kingdom here on earth in this place and in this time.